Hello students, in last class we have seen the radii of Bohr's atom. Now today we will see velocity of electron in Bohr's stationary orbit. So from last class we have the equation for radius. You have already seen this equation. Now we will move on to get the equation for velocity of an electron in stationary orbit. Okay. We will consider Bohr's postulate. Okay. What we know from Bohr's postulate, m v r that is equal to n h by 2 pi. Okay, we will consider this. Then, velocity of electron in nth orbit can be written from this equation itself. We will just change m and r to the right side denominator. Okay, so we will get equation that is nth orbit. So, I will give v n that can be written as n h divided by 2 pi m r n. Okay, is it clear? This equation is just taken from the previous equation itself. Now, we have to substitute value of r n. We have it from the previous equation. Okay, we will just substitute it over here. Just do the substitution. You can see what happens. We will just substitute this over here. Okay, v n can be written as n h divided by 2 pi m okay for rn we will substitute the reverse it actually denominator comes to the numerator when you multiply instead of dividing you can just check it okay if you divide it over here the denominator term will come to the numerator so what happens these terms will be on the numerator these terms will be on the denominator then just write the same thing z pi m e square okay on the numerator then the on the denominator epsilon naught h square n square then do the ca uh, cancellation what all things you get to cancel here you can cancel pi you can cancel n over here with the square h can be cancelled with the square then m can be cancelled after doing all these cancellation what do you get equation v n is equal to z e square divided by 2 epsilon naught n h okay this is a equation what you get now observe this equation what kind of relation you can assume for n v n and n see how they are related they are inversely proportional see it's clear that v n is inversely proportional to n what does it mean so, if V n is inversely proportional to n, n you know, it is a stationary orbit. See, n will go on increase. Last class we have seen how the radius of n increases. Okay, stationary orbit radii increases in the square, right? So, here we can just write V n is proportional to 1 by n. Electron move with the lower speed in the higher orbit, okay, and vice versa. When electrons revolve in the lower orbit that is very near to the nucleus, they move faster. At the same time, when they revolve in the higher and higher orbits, they move slower and slower. See this thing, same thing what you can consider in the solar system, you know right? When the planets are very close to the sun, it has to move faster because the gravitational pull beam pull will be more over there, right? Similarly, when the electron is very near to the nucleus, it will experience very high electrostatic force of attraction because electron is negatively charged and the nucleus is positively charged. Okay, if I consider a hydrogen atom, what do I get? I know, right? Z is equal to 1 for hydrogen. I will substitute in the same equation, Vn is equal to Z e square divided by 2 epsilon naught n h. So, Z is equal to 1, Vn is equal to E square divided by 2 epsilon naught n h. When we substitute n is equal to 1, because hydrogen, gas or hydrogen has got only one orbit, right? It has got only one orbit. So, let me take n is equal to 1. Then what do I get? I will get the value of Vn that is equal to 2.18 into 10 to the power 6 meter per second. Just see this, the speed, how fast it must be moving. It, the value is in terms of 10 to the power 6. Okay. So that is the speed with which an electron in the hydrogen atom moves in the first orbit. Okay. 
So, as it goes, uh, when we consider some other elements, atoms, what happens? As they have got more and more orbits, the speed of the electron in the lower orbit will be more, okay? And uh, higher orbit, it will be less compared to the first orbit. Again, the same thing repeats, okay? Now, we will move on to the third concept, that is total energy of electron in stationary orbit. So, this question, you might get it for 5 marks. You can expect it. But the previous one may be for 3 marks, not for 5 marks, okay? So, this will be a 5 mark question. How do we calculate the total energy of electron in the stationary orbit? So, what will be the energy with which the electron is revolving in the stationary orbit? For that, what we need, total energy you already know, right? What is total energy? Total energy will be the sum of potential energy and the kinetic energy of electron in that orbit. So, total energy has to be sum of potential and kinetic energy. Why it has got potential energy? Because it has got electrostatic pull. Why it has got kinetic energy? Because they are moving. Okay. Now, we will consider the kinetic energy of electron in nth orbit first. Okay. Yes, we will substitute this in normal equation kn. I have taken it as kn, nth orbit kinetic energy. Half m vn square. Half m vn square. But we know from the previous derivation, that is the derivation for the radii, there we had seen this equation. If you just check this equation, you will get it. mvn is given by z e square divided by 4 pi epsilon naught rn. You can see this equation in the previous one. Okay. We will substitute this equation over here. In kn is equal to half m v n square, we will substitute for v n square. What do we get then? We can get kn is equal to z e square, see this, z e square divided by 8 pi epsilon naught rn. Why it is 8 pi? See, you can just see this. This value is just divided by 2. That's it. So, you multiply 2 over here with the 4. You get z e square divided by 8 pi epsilon naught rn. That's it. So, you get the equation for kinetic energy. Now, we will move on to getting equation for potential energy. Okay. So, potential energy we know un is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught z e charge of a nucleus. This is charge of electron. So, z e into minus e divided by r n. So, what I, what I can do here? I can take the negative sign outside. So, what do I do? I will write un is equal to minus z e square divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r n. See, listen, just check it carefully. You can simply write z e square, okay, with the minus sign outside divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r n. So, you get the equation for potential energy. Now, again going to find out the total energy, what do we do? We will add both these equations. When you add both these equations, you will write first kinetic energy equation z e square divided by 8 pi epsilon naught r n plus minus inside the bracket z e square divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r n. Now, what happens here? You can just check this equation. It will be like 1 by 8 minus 1 by 4. What do you get? You will get minus 1 by 8. Correct, right? Just check the same mathematical equation is of this type. Okay. Then you can write En is equal to minus z e square divided by 8 pi epsilon naught rn. See, look at this minus sign. Only minus sign is extra over here with this equation. So, we have the common terms over there. That's the reason why we can just do this calculation. Okay. Then, we have again for this Rn, we have to substitute. You have already have this equation in the previous one, right? We will take the equation from there. Then, we will write it over here. Rn is equal to epsilon naught h square n square divided by pi m e square z. Again, just do the substitution on this equation substituting over here. So, what happens? Like what I discussed in the previous equation, 
it just reverses when instead of dividing you can just multiply by the reverse term correct right so you will just reverse the term then you multiply it you can cancel the terms over here whatever you get just see this you can cancel pi pi then that's the only cancellation possible over here then all remaining will be multiplied multiplied you can see this equation just do that calculation by yourself so it will be very clear to you now what equation you are getting so do the calculation by your own don't copy from the board okay just do the calculation and just see whether you are getting this final equation so final equation will be minus m e to the power 4 divided by 8 epsilon naught square h square multiplied by z square divided by n square okay so z square you know right atomic number n you know orbits okay it is just integers if you consider hydrogen atom we, we can write z is equal to 1 yes then just substitute it over here we will get an equation en is equal to minus m e to the power 4 8 epsilon naught square n square divided by sorry n square into h square so all these terms except this are constants m is a constant e is a constant 8 is a constant epsilon naught square epsilon is a epsilon naught is a constant h is also a constant so this constant will give you a value of minus 13.6 okay then dividing by n square you will get the equation for energy this is the equation for energy by substituting the values on this equation we are getting equation for energy as minus 13.6 divided by n square electron volt okay now we can write total energy of electron in stationary orbit is negative which means that electrons are bound to the nucleus and they are not free to move see what is the meaning of having this energy negative actually there is no possibility that energy will be negative you don't have negative energy but here why we are taking it as negative energy because you need to add energy to make it zero so that the electron will be free to move from the nucleus or it will be out of the pull of the nucleus it will become a free electron when it gains energy zero okay and if you still further give energy you can take out the electron from the atom itself or you can remove the electron from the material that you will be going to you must have studied or you will be going to study in the uh, dual nature and other things where you see the photoelectric effect you must have studied it in maybe in your high school also you must have seen photoelectric effect work function other things that also related to the same ideas only now what happens electron energy is negative so that electrons are bound to the nucleus and they are not free to move then we will substitute the values for n okay we will go by 1 2 3 etc okay you see here n is equal to 1 then we can write e1 is equal to minus 13.6 divided by 1 square that is equal to minus 13.6 electron volt so if you take hydrogen atom you get this value or else you can substitute the value for any other atom atomic number can be substituted on this equation and you can get the values okay when n is equal to 2 e2 will be equal to minus 13.6 divided by n square n square that is 2 square that you will get as minus 3.4 electron volt again if you substitute for n is equal to 3 just do the calculation and check if you want e3 is equal to minus 13.6 divided by 3 square what is it it's 9 so you will get the value minus 1.5 electron volt if you substitute for n is equal to infinity n infinity what you get will be zero so e infinity will be zero what is the meaning of that i have already told you e infinity is zero that means electron is free to move from the nuclear pool okay total energy increases as electron goes to higher and higher orbits okay